His Excellency, thank you very much for accepting us and thanks for your time. Thank you. Uh, as the Turkish uh, TV, uh, we would like you to introduce yourself to Turkish people first, please. Well, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما شاء الله خلق قوة لا بالله My name is Ibrahim Shekarou Well currently the Honorable Minister of Education for the Federal Republic of Nigeria Before becoming the Minister I have had the opportunity of governing Kano State as an elected Executive Governor of Kano State the most popular state in Nigeria uh, for eight years, uh, for two terms, I served four years, 2003 to 2007, and 2007 to 2011. Uh, before then, I had been in the public service <coughs> for 26 years. I started my career in 1977 after graduating from Amadi Bello University, uh, where I read mathematics education. Started my career as a classroom teacher grew up to become a school principal. I was principal for about 13 years in different uh, institutions, different secondary schools. Thereafter, I grew up as a director in charge of planning and statistics in the state, Kano State Ministry of Education. I was a zonal education officer and became a permanent secretary in the same Ministry of Education. I was moved to be permanent secretary, Minister of Water Resources, I was moved to be permanent secretary in the cabinet office of Kano State Government. I was moved to be permanent secretary in the Civil Service Commission. Then later on, I switched back to the classroom where I became a chief lecturer in mathematics at the State College of Art, Science and Remedial Studies. By 2001, uh, October 2001, I voluntarily retired from public service and decided to join politics. Uh, Less than two years after my leaving public service, I was elected as the governor of Kano State, uh, a civilian governor, 2003. So, so far, briefly, this had been my background. Uh, I, as a profession, I am a trained teacher, trained guidance counselor, and uh, I always cherish this. I pray I will continue to be a teacher till the end of my uh, life. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Excellency, uh, yeah. as you said, you are you, you are originally a teacher and you have been almost in almost every segment of this education uh, process. Yes. So I think this question would go as now, what is the educational sector in Nigeria's biggest challenge and what is the biggest strength? Well, I think for now the our biggest challenge is uh, have actually two or three. Number one is to increase the access at all levels, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands of students who want to go to school and uh, we want to create the opportunities for them to go to school. And uh, out of the students that actually graduate from our secondary schools, not up to a quarter end up getting into the university. So you can imagine the large chunk of students that are out there. Of course, the number of universities are on the increase, colleges of education, polytechnics are daily on the increase, but this is still far, far from being sufficient. So our greatest challenge is to increase the, uh, the, the access. Number two, of course, we are still battling with uh, the general awareness in some parts of the country. Uh, particularly up in the north and some part of the southeastern part of Nigeria. Now for the north, the greatest challenge is to see how we can have many more of our girls into school. Uh, and in the south, particularly south, is to see more of the boys going into school. Uh, so this is also another challenge to really mobilize the people, encourage them to go to school. The third challenge, of course, is that of resources. See, uh, we have very limited resources. When you have the demand by far outweighing the supply of resources, uh, then you have the biggest challenge of prioritizing within the system. So this, we are uh, thankful to God, we are getting a lot of support 
from international uh, development partners, uh, USID, DFID, UNESCO, uh, World Bank, and uh, several other donor agencies. They've been coming to our aid. And of course, we also have the challenge of quality. It is one thing to increase the access, mm -hmm. to mobilize people to go to school or accept the, the call to go to school. Uh, but building the school, having the students, you don't still have a school until you have the teachers and the instructional materials. These are the two factors that make any educational system to, to, to really grow. Uh, teachers and instructional materials and this is uh, for you to produce this you need resources you need more money to train the teachers to employ them to recruit them to retrain them you need more money to provide the instructional materials and so on so basically these are our three major challenges and uh, uh, thankfully we are doing quite a lot we're moving gradually towards resolving them Wonderful. Yeah. As it is written in the books and people know very well, uh, in the past times of Nigerian history, people were very excited about government schools, public schools, and their reputation and their glory was extremely high. So what do you think would take to regain that uh, reputation back? Well, I quite agree with you. In the past years, uh, anyone that attended school uh, 30, 40, 50, 60 years back will tell you that the situation has uh, changed and uh, it has given us a lot of concern. Public schools used to be uh, a very high standard, but the main factor there is the issue of uh, explosion in our population. There is very, very rapid growth mm -hmm. in our population. The growth on, of population by far outweigh the provision in education. I see. Uh, so this led to overcrowding in our schools, this led to overstretching of the teachers, this led to gross shortage of teachers and instructional materials. And naturally this will affect uh, quality. When I had the opportunity of attending school, primary, secondary, we were no more than 25, 30 maximum per class. And you have only a teacher handling you and it's only one arm each but what we have today it's uh, hundreds of students in a class with several arms uh, in the 60s and 70s in nigeria when you have a school of 200 students 300 students is considered as a very large school but today you have schools of 3000 4000 5000 students as a primary or secondary school and yet the number of teachers are not there. So you find that the one-to-one -one relationship with the teacher, the teacher-student ratio has gone very high. And that affected the quality of the public schools. Uh, so, but this notwithstanding, both the state government, the federal government are joining us together and uh, trying to address this issue. For example, now our focus since I came here has been the restoration of the dignity of the teaching service. We want to introduce very rigorous uh, training and retraining and recruitment of teachers in our schools. Uh, you don't produce a teacher over the year, one, two years. It takes you a minimum of three years to produce a very qualified teacher after secondary education. But in one year, you can build millions of classrooms. So this is the greatest challenge in the public schools. And uh, we're quite aware the quality has gone down because of these factors I've mentioned. Our challenge now is we're trying to build more schools, recruiting more teachers, so that you reduce to the barest minimum the teacher-student ratio, bring it as low as possible so that the teacher-student relationship will be low and there will be better contact with the teachers and this will improve quality. And uh, in that way, we restore the quality of the public schools by the grace of God. Excellency, you were the governor of uh, Kano State and back then when you were there, there were uh, Nigerian Turkish International Colleges. 
Uh, to your knowledge, of course, it's clear that there are, there are these schools in Yobe, Kano, Kaduna, Ogun State, Lagos, Abuja, of course, maybe more in different states. Yeah. Uh, tell us, please, your first encounter with the Turkish international schools in Nigeria and how do you rate them? from where they started in 1998, from a very rented uh, small school, to where they are now in 2014? Well, I think uh, my encounter with the uh, Turkish International School has been very, very uh, encouraging and uh, very inspiring. Uh, it may interest you to know, that, to know that at least three of my children passed through the uh, Turkish International Secondary School in Kano. And uh, we're very proud of them. One of them has graduated and she's now into her master's degree. Uh, the other two are now reading the final year in their degree courses. And uh, they had very excellent results. So my encounter with the Turkish International School has been very, very wonderful. I found them to be concerned with quality and discipline of the students. And these are the two key uh, most important things. Uh, hard work and good conduct. This is what uh, is always being emphasized. And I will ever remain grateful to the uh, Turkish International School uh, program. I think uh, just like any other private contribution, we welcome this. These, those of us in the education industry uh, appreciate this because you are, by establishing such schools, helping to minimize and reduce the overstretching in public schools and uh, it's a very wonderful contribution. I found them very useful. So uh, First Strap Group, which is the owner of NTIC schools, the university and the hospital, they have this philosophy, whatever you earn in this country, invest it back to the same country, which is of course Nigeria. That's right. Would you comment on that strategy or the philosophy? Uh, I think this is, this, this is a very godly attitude because uh, when you live in a community and you earn resources or income from, from those such communities, it's only godly and fair for you to do your social responsibility services to the people. Uh, I don't see the establishment of such schools is a money-making business, but uh, because we know the greatest investment you can make in any community is to invest into the educational system. So I think uh, this contribution uh, to me and to all those that are really concerned is contributing to the survival of our community, to the survival of our nation, because education is life. Uh, it's all about us. It's the foundation of every uh, societal development and uh, anywhere on, in the world. So I see this as a very, very godly social responsibility uh, service by establishing schools, hospitals. These are the two things, I see, uh, the two, three things as we know uh, politically that give an individual progress, sound education, good health, and security. Once you give any human beings these two, uh, you have finished with him. All other things he can do for himself. Uh, Excellency, how do you feel the presence of these Turkish schools, Turkish Nigerian schools actually, that's how we call it, yeah. uh, has affected Nigeria in terms of like uh, so, so, sociological view, psychological view, and also setting up the bar of the standard for the country in terms of education, including Nigerian uh, Turkish Nile University also, if you can. No, 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 I think it is uh, very, very, I, I was very excited to uh, see the university really owned by the Turkish community uh, established in Abuja. And by some coincidence as well, uh, my own biological daughter is now a student in the Nile University. So I think uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like I am, uh, by some God's uh, providence, becoming part and parcel of the uh, Turkish uh, educational system in Nigeria. So I have the first-hand uh, evidence to uh, say that these institutions are contributing towards the growth and development of our society. Because as I said earlier on, the best investment is in education. So by establishing schools, uh, invariably,
Turkish uh, educational uh, investment in Nigeria is investing into the development of this country. You know, when you invest into education, it's not something that you'll see the result in one year, two years, three years, four years. Uh, very soon, these students of the international school, uh, the students of the Nile University, in the next five, ten years, they will be men of themselves, they will be occupying different sectors of the society, and uh, it is then that you see the impact, uh, the result, and uh, it will affect the society, the home, and all the rest. Uh, so my children have become part and parcel of the Turkish school system uh, for life. And I'm sure when they grow and become uh, responsible citizens, they'll have stories to tell. And uh, they will really tell good stories about the schools established by the Turkish community. Excellency, have you ever visited Turkey? Uh, not yet. Yeah, it's, uh, this is going to be my pleasure. In this couple of days, I will be in Turkey. And uh, I have heard a lot of it. I've read about it. It had been my wish to visit Turkey. But God's time is always the best. Uh, God has brought the time. I will be there. And I'm sure this will be the beginning of the beginning of my relationship with the Turkish community by the grace of God. I'll be coming to last questions. Mm. Just, this is one of the last. Our uh, universities in Nigeria are collaborating with foreign institutions to share the knowledge and so resources yet. What's your... Well, our universities are always encouraged really to associate with foreign universities. You know, knowledge generally is not considered uh, true knowledge until it is exposed to other sectors. Uh, as an institution of learning, our universities are encouraged to, uh, to collaborate with other institutions. And uh, as a Minister of Education now, we are going to encourage this the more. When I was Governor of Cairo State, I led several teams to different countries all over the world to have collaboration between our education industry in Kano, our universities, our tertiary institutions with countries uh, across the world. Now that I am overseeing the education aspect entirely in Nigeria, uh, we are going to encourage this. Uh, many universities do this and will encourage this. And I'm happy uh, I've come close to the Nile University now. We will encourage a lot of uh, collaboration with them and through them will link up with many more other universities in Turkey and I think this is a very good uh, beginning for us. Uh, my last question Excellency, what are you most proud of about your job? Well, I am particularly more proud about being associated with the teaching job. I had always found it a very wonderful uh, profession. I enjoy it and uh, I look forward to using my opportunity to improve the well-being uh, of the teaching service, to improve the quality, improve the welfare, because I have come to believe that, not because I'm from the teaching service. Uh, we have a very common statement, which is globally accepted that no nation can rise above the quality of the educational system and no education system can really grow and rise above the quality of its teachers. So this implies no nation can grow and rise higher than the quality of its teachers. And this is one of my tasks, my target, my vision, to see that the teaching job is sustained as the most dignified job was high integrity and respected in society so that the teachers will be in a position to impart knowledge and imparting knowledge mean imparting progress. Thank you. Honorable Minister of Education of thank Nigeria, you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome.